Hello, Dr. Jack, how are you? Very well, and you, Nora, how are you? I'm good, thank you. We're so excited. I will be speaking on, on the behalf of my family, Birth Kuwait. We're very excited that we will be hosting you every Monday, and it will be uh, available online for moms all over the world. Uh, it's, it's every Monday in May, so it's going to be very exciting. Uh, our topic for today is Not Enough Milk, which is a very interesting topic. It is, and it's a topic that uh, we shouldn't need to talk about because uh, uh, most of the problems can be prevented, and those that uh, cannot be prevented, well, we have options for these problems. Right, right. So my first question, what is the most occurring um, difficulty for breastfeeding moms that come to your clinic? Well, actually, there are many uh, very common problems, and uh, it varies from time to time. But uh, certainly, the fact that the baby is not getting enough from the breast would be one of the most common. Yeah, yeah. And do you have a most common reason for that? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the most common is uh, the way we get breastfeeding going in the first few days after birth uh, very much interferes with the way uh, uh, mothers get started with breastfeeding. And it's well known that uh, how breastfeeding goes during the first week after birth is very, very important to make sure that uh, breastfeeding goes well, that the baby gets plenty from the breast. But so much interferes with how the baby gets started with breastfeeding uh, that uh, so many mothers think that they're not producing enough milk or that they think that they never could produce enough milk when in fact most mothers could produce all the milk the baby needed. Beautiful. So you're saying that their expectations are the like problem at the beginning, right? So what they are expecting, what do you think they should be expecting? Well, I, I, I don't think I meant that. What I meant was that so much occurs around labor and birth that results in mothers not breastfeeding well. So for example, it has become very common that mothers are told, oh, your baby has lost 10% of his birth weight and therefore we need to supplement the baby. Well, this is completely ridiculous. And it's ridiculous in particular because in most uh, countries in North America, in Europe, and I would say in, uh, 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 the, uh, in Kuwait as well, mothers give birth with epidurals. And what does that mean? It means that the mothers get a lot of intravenous fluids during the first few days, uh, during the uh, labor and the birth, and after the birth as well. And the problem with that is that it's not just the mother that gets all this fluid, it's also the baby. And so the baby is born extra hydrated, extra weight, overweight, than he normally would have been born. And so the baby starts losing this water that the mother got, that the baby got during the labor and birth. And so the baby loses weight. And so they look, oh my God, the baby's lost 10% of his birth weight. We need to give the baby formula with a bottle. And that is exactly what we should not be doing. Because if there is a real concern, then we need to help the mother breastfeed better get the baby latched on better, not automatically give the baby formula and give the baby bottles. And this is where there is a huge problem in most uh, countries in Europe, uh, in Canada, North America, Australia. It's a problem in, uh, in all affluent countries. And of course, Kuwait is an affluent country. And I'm not surprised if you tell me that most mothers give birth with epidurals. Is that true? It's true. So the first okay. expectation is that if there is an epidural, if there is any IV fluids, then we can expect more weight loss and we should not be scared. So not only we're trying to tell moms that this effect, they maybe want to consider not having an epidural, but also to set their expectations that if this happens, then we can expect more weight loss and not blame it on breastfeeding, right? Right. Well, as a, as a man, of course, uh, I'm not the one to tell mothers not to have epidurals. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that we push the epidurals very, very strongly, and many mothers would be happy to uh, give birth without any uh, pain relief. And as a matter of fact, it's uh, become very 
I wouldn't say very common, but it's become more and more common that in our area here in Canada, that more and more mothers are deciding to give birth at home because they know how the uh, hospitals interfere with not only breastfeeding, but with labor and birth. So the real issue is that if the baby has indeed lost a certain percentage of weight that we're all concerned about, mm -hmm. then the idea is not automatic supplementation. The idea is let's help the mother breastfeed better. And what happens in those first few days after birth and the first week really determines whether the mother will produce enough milk, but even more importantly, the fact is that many mothers are producing enough milk, but the baby is not getting it. And the baby's not getting it because he's not latching on properly. And if the baby is not latching on properly, then the baby doesn't get the milk that's available to him. So therefore, we need not only to understand how breastfeeding works, and I would say that in my area, the uh, nursing staff, the pediatricians do not watch the baby at the breast. They do not know if the baby is getting milk from the breast or not. They just assume the 10% weight loss actually means something. And I don't believe that it means anything at all. Yeah. So what happens in the first week in, in terms of the early initiation of breastfeeding right away. So any delay would be affecting and positioning and breastfeeding, uh, like latching on and everything like you have said. So what are the things that moms can do? Like what are the recommendations or advices that we can give them so they can do this on their own. So if we know that uh, staff isn't always that helpful, we want to give that knowledge to moms, right? Right. And what mothers need to know is, oh, well, my baby is latching on rel. I know that because it doesn't hurt. And the baby is drinking because a baby is not necessarily drinking from the breast just because the baby uh, has got the breast in his mouth and is making sucking movements. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that this is something that too many health professionals don't understand. They mm -hmm. think, oh, well, the baby is latched on, the baby's got the breast in his mouth, the baby makes sucking movements, then he must be getting milk. But obviously, he's not getting enough because he's lost 10%. No, that's not the way it goes. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to help the mothers breastfeed properly. And we need nursing staff, even midwives uh, need to know how to know a baby's getting milk and not depend just on the 10% weight loss. So how do they learn that? How, what, what is your advice for them to know this? The mothers, the nurses, the midwives, the doctors, all they have to do is go to our website. And our website says, here's a video that shows you if a baby's getting milk or not. Here's a video that shows a baby not getting milk. Here's a baby who's getting milk, but it may not be enough. So here's what we do. These videos are all there. Our blogs talk about this all the time, how, how, uh, uh, how the, uh, uh, the recommendations for uh, uh, percent weight loss, how uh, epidurals and cesarean section interfere with breastfeeding, and how we really can help mothers, not just give the baby a bottle of formula. Oh, I just lost your voice here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I was saying this is very helpful. And I was wondering, when can we say that this mom has um, not enough milk problem? When can we say that there is a problem? Well, there are some mothers who really cannot produce enough milk. That's, you know, unfortunate, but uh, this thing does exist, but it's certainly not, not as large a percentage as we would think from all the mothers who are being supplemented right from the very beginning. But the way to know if the baby is getting milk or not is again to watch the baby at the breast, to watch how the baby is drinking. Uh, we teach the mother what a good latch is. We teach the mother how to know the baby is drinking from the breast. We teach something we call breast compressions, which is essentially compressing the breast so that the baby gets more milk from the breast. We remind mothers that they should offer both breasts at each feeding and that there are ways of increasing milk uh, production and milk supply to the baby. Uh, I think that there are some rumors around here. I don't know where it comes from, but 
mothers are often told that they must feed the baby on just one breast at a feeding. And it's widespread. I receive emails uh, asking questions from all over the world. And mothers are saying often, I just offer one breast at each feeding so that the baby can get the high fat milk. Well, here's a secret. If the baby's not drinking milk from the breast, the baby's not getting high fat milk. It's just insane where this idea comes from that you should offer only one breast at each feeding. Some babies will take one breast and be perfectly satisfied, but the mother should still offer the other side because things change. Sometimes milk production decreases a little bit and the baby's not happy anymore with just one breast. And I think that we just have to get past these rules that make no sense and try to remember what our grandmothers and mothers before them were doing. They naturally offered both breasts. So how do we know if a baby's not getting milk enough from the breast? By watching the baby at the breast. And let me tell you that there are very, very few pediatricians, for example, that ever watch the baby at the breast. And even if they did, they don't know what to look for. And this, unfortunately, is true for many sorts of health professionals. Thank you so much. Uh, I, was, I was wondering, like, if so, why do we have two breasts, right? If we have two breasts feed from one side, why they are two anyways? <laughs> Like, well, I don't know where it, this right? idea came from. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know where this idea came from, except that somebody noticed, and it is true, that the milk increases in fat the longer the baby is drinking from the breast, not just sucking at the breast. Yeah. So if the baby's no longer drinking from the breast, he's not getting high fat milk. So somebody takes a theory, which has a basis. Somebody has a theory that says, well, if the milk increases in fat as the baby drinks longer, then we should keep the baby to one breast. And this has become widespread and it's wrong. And timings, right? They, like sometimes it's like, oh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Setting a time is on its own, like not, not human, right? It's just like so artificial. It's not even a mammal. Yeah. <laughs> no mammal feeds by the clock. No mammal. Or should feed by the clock. Yeah. So how long should the baby feed? I'm kidding. Like, what, well, like when they you know. ask, they are expecting numbers, right? And there are studies about numbers. So we're not saying we want to stick to a number, but expectation, right? Right. Well, when the baby starts drinking less and less from the breast, the flow of milk decreases, then the baby starts, a uh, young baby starts to fall asleep at the breast. Mm -hmm. But I think that if the mother is seeing that the baby is not drinking, forget the watch, forget the timing. The baby is drinking, don't do anything. The baby starts to drink less and less and less. Take the baby off and off for the other side before he gets so sleepy that he doesn't take the other side because sometimes when the flow is slow, uh, particularly a very young baby will start to uh, fall asleep at the breast and then become very sleepy, even asleep and won't take the other side. I think that the rules should be thrown away. Yes, yes. So no time, just watch the baby. Uh, what do you baby. think about the babies who fall asleep within like the first two minutes of, of the nursing session? Were well, they that not, means, like, sorry, go ahead. Were they not hungry at all or, or, it is, or is it milk supply issue or drinking? Well, it's not necessarily milk supply issue. And again, I'm, one of the important things to realize is that babies often don't get milk from the breast, even though the milk is available. We have mothers coming our, to our clinic and after the baby is fed, the babe, mother still has uh, fullness in the breast. What does that mean? It means the baby didn't get the milk that's there. And why does a baby not get the milk that's there? Usually because the baby's not latched on well. Mm -hmm. So if a baby falls asleep after two minutes, and again, we shouldn't be talking about uh, times, but if the baby very quickly falls asleep at the breast, it means he's not getting milk very well. Babies do not fall asleep just because they're full. They fall asleep uh, because the flow of milk is slow. And that's why it's important to offer the second side, but also to make sure that the baby latches on well. 
because if a baby latches on well, they get the milk well. If the baby latches on poorly, then the baby doesn't get milk well, and of course the mother can get uh, sore nipples as well. Thank you, thank you for uh, your answer. It's uh, it's very it's it's really enlightening. And I think if we are watching the baby on the breast and the baby's closing the eyes, are we like I know this is very detailed, but moms ask about this every day and they have sent us questions. So uh, tell us about babies. Are like are they not allowed to sleep on the breast? Uh, and us thinking that this is continuation of breastfeeding or closing the eyes is okay. Closing the eyes is okay, but it really matters what the baby is doing at the breast. If the baby is just nibbling and not getting milk well, that's one thing. Then I think the mother should, if she's, uh, I mean, we often recommend breast compressions where the mother squeezes the breast and allows the baby to get more milk. And they often find that, oh, he's awake again. And he's awake again because he's getting good flow from the breast. Mm -hmm. But if the baby's no longer getting good flow from the breast, then take him off, off for the other side before he gets too sleepy. I think this whole notion of one breast at a feeding, this whole notion of timing is just not going to work for many mothers. Right. Um, my next question is, what do you think the reasons are? Or do we, do we need to care about these reasons or we just fix the problem and not ask what was the reason? Okay, well, there are many reasons. And I've already discussed about how the... Uh, practices during labor and birth uh, affect how the baby gets uh, milk from the breast uh, mm -hmm. and how we interfere because we talk always about 10% weight loss without thinking that 10% weight loss really doesn't mean anything when the mother has, gives birth by cesarean section or by uh, when the mother's had an intravenous uh, for an epidural. Uh, and I think we also tend to forget that the medications that are used in epidurals also will affect the baby because they makes the baby sleepy. So we have a lot of problems in those first few days due to the fact that the practices that we have in delivering babies and uh, babies being born mm -hmm. uh, really affect breastfeeding. And we just don't seem to believe it. Certainly the anesthetists don't seem to believe it. The gynecologists don't seem to believe it. Uh, and I think that we need to get that message across that what you are doing to these mothers actually does affect uh, uh, how the baby uh, breastfeeds and how well the baby breastfeeds. So I think that that's a very important issue. The other important issue is that we need good help for the mothers. If the baby is not doing well, it's not a question of, well, just give them a bottle of formula, everything will be fine. No, there are things that we can do to help that baby get more milk from the breast. I've already mentioned fixing the latch, very important. We have uh, uh, videos and photos of uh, babies uh, latching on poorly and latching on well. Uh, we need to teach the mother's breast compression so that the, uh, the baby gets more milk from the breast. We need to uh, release uh, tongue ties. Tongue ties interfere with the way a baby latches on. So if a baby has difficulty latching on, again, I keep repeating this, that the baby is not going to get the milk that's available to him. So there are all sorts of issues that can be done. And you know, some mothers really, by the time we see them, uh, they are too far gone, the milk supply has decreased. We will supplement these babies, but we supplement them not with a bottle. We supplement them with a tube at the breast so that the baby is continuing to breastfeed. And I think that a really important issue here is that breastfeeding is much more than breast milk. Breastfeeding is a relationship between a mother and a child, or maybe two children, a mother and a child. And it's a very important relationship. It's a relationship, it's a close physical and emotional relationship between that mother and that child. And we even if the mother has to uh, supplement, we encourage her to use the tube at the breast so that the baby gets supplemented at the breast, not by bottle, which interferes even more with breastfeeding. That's great. It's a beautiful relationship indeed. And if we want to discuss reasons that are related to the mom herself, like if is there anything that she can uh, do or any indicators even before she gives birth 
And this is like the factors that we're talking about are the factors that are not about the latch or the birth practices. Well, uh, it's true that some mothers have uh, uh, breast tissue that seems to be insufficient. But I also have uh, a blog on our website that talks about this issue of, uh, of uh, insufficient breast uh, tissue uh, or glandular tissue. It's called the IGT uh, in America. Mm -hmm. And I think that the issue really is that you just can't, <coughs> sorry, you can't just look at the breast and say, oh, insufficient. Because we have very many examples of where mothers had typical breasts of insufficient glandular tissue, and yet they breastfed perfectly well, uh, without any problems, without any uh, uh, supplementation. But it is true that such a thing exists. And I think that again, uh, you know, if a mother has these sort of breasts, they should get good help even before the baby is born to decide what they need to do in order to make the breastfeeding work. And if they need to supplement, well, there are options. And certainly I know that this is a problem in, uh, in uh, countries of Muslim faith, but uh, you know, donated breast milk uh, is something that is becoming more and more common in, uh, in North America. Uh, breast milk banks, more and more common. Uh, and uh, it's a complicated issue in Muslim countries, but uh, I know that in North America, in Europe, uh, this is a very common thing. And mothers can do this. It's, uh, uh, they can get uh, donated breast milk from uh, a friend, a cousin, uh, whoever. Cousin. Hmm. Okay, may I, I will think about that one. So, you know, it is possible to maintain breastfeeding even under circumstances where uh, uh, mothers are told that they've got uh, insufficient glandular tissue. It's possible to make this work. Yes, in, in Muslim countries, uh, there is there are the restrictions of that these like two they become siblings basically the the milk brothers we call them, and uh, what we're having here right now it's it's not very strong and and like people don't know much about it but we have a milk bank that doesn't have mixed milk they just they just act like a liaison where they're connecting to uh, families and documenting that for the Islamic uh, purposes uh, so these families know each other so the thing that we are not having is that the connected like a lot of milk the pool of milk let's say but what we have is the ability for milk donation to happen with some paperwork to to uh, like like please all sides like we say right so we have mm -hmm. to fulfill all all the matters and in that what i'm trying to say is it's it's happening it's there but not many people are encouraged right so how how do you think um because they think okay breast milk is not possible breastfeeding is not possible i have tried my best second best is formula but that's not true right well no second best is uh uh is a bank breast milk and you know we've already discussed this a little bit. Uh, I remember we, uh, we had a conference in Tunisia where this came up in uh, very, very, you know, very strong ways. But I thought, well, you could always have a, uh, uh, I don't know if this would work, but I, th I thought, okay, so you have bank breast milk. This breast milk is uh, from a mother who was breastfeeding a boy. And this breast milk was from a mother who is breastfeeding a girl. So if the baby who needs supplemented is a girl, then she gets milk from a mother who is breastfeeding a girl. Does that work? Uh, it, it, they just need to know that they become siblings because when she becomes siblings with that girl, that girl might have, like the baby will be siblings to the whole family, right? So if I have, I have two, uh, two babies who I give my milk to. So not only my daughter who I was breastfeeding becomes their sibling, also my other babies, whoever I have given birth to, you know, it's, it's a bit complicated. It becomes- Yes, okay, I'll, I'll yeah. leave that aside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a very interesting topic, but we hope that uh, they, moms just need to realize the importance of that because it is possible. There are ways. Documenting that works. 
right? So we just need to know that they become, I mean, it's not, not allowed to have siblings in milk. You just need to know them, right? This is the, right. so we, we really love to encourage moms to have that because there are babies who need it. They, now more like premature babies, uh, twins, um, really small premature babies. Yes, they are encouraged because there is a lot of life saving over there. So right, right. it's happening. But for uh, moms who, ha who have not enough milk, they're not as encouraged. They don't see themselves as doing so. So my question is, do you think uh, nutrition has, has a role in that? Well, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, breast milk is the best nutrition uh, uh, for uh, any baby and toddler. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's made for uh, babies. And, you know, people don't understand how different the, even the so-called breast uh, best uh, formula is how different it is from real breast milk. And it's uh, insane to believe with all that we know about uh, uh, breast milk and formulas that somehow formulas are s almost as good. They aren't. We have lots of data to show this is not the case. We use formula sometimes because it's necessary. We don't want the baby to starve. But of course, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not as good. But I think that in order to maintain the breastfeeding, it should be, a supplementation should be done as much as possible at the breast with this, what we call a lactation aid, so that the baby is still at the breast while getting formula. And how about mother's nutrition? Does it have a role in um, low milk supply? I'm not sure. Certainly, we, well, I worked in Southern Africa, and we saw mothers who were quite malnourished, and yet they seemed to produce all the milk that the baby needed. The babies were happy and fat, and uh, uh, like people like to have fat babies, exclusively breastfeeding. So uh, perhaps in uh, borderline cases where the mother would just produce enough milk, if she's also malnourished, then maybe that moves it over to, oh, not enough milk. But if the mother could have had the capacity to produce all the milk the baby needs, I think that her nutritional status, I mean, it's important for her, but it seems to be less important for the milk production. Thank you so much. Uh, my last question is, uh, this is beautiful. Uh, time passed really fast and it's a lot of knowledge and information. What is your advice Last advice for moms who go through this, that they don't have enough milk for their babies. Something that you want to say to them. Get good help immediately, as soon as possible, okay? So not wait. As we see in our clinic, you know, mothers come to us, well, you know, the baby's six weeks old already. That's mm -hmm. absurd. And so get help as soon as possible. And what? Do, let me just uh, give a brief resume of what we have on our website. First of all, Fix the baby's latch. Mm -hmm. Fix the, make it sure that the baby is latched on well. Then watch for the baby drinking and know if the baby is drinking well at the breast or not so well or very poorly at the breast. Use breast compressions to increase the flow of milk to the baby. Uh, offer both breasts at each feeding. We often will use uh, domperidone to increase the mother's milk supply. Uh, we use it uh, uh, at a dose of uh, 30 milligrams three times a day. To begin with, we go up from there. And if still things are not going well, lactation aid at the breast and keep going. Do you prescribe any herbal uh, remedies? Well, we do. I don't think they work that well. And I think it is important to start uh, all these steps as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So I uh, prefer to use domperidone over the herbal med uh, medications. Don't forget, herbs are medications. If they have an effect on your body, they are drugs. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Jack. We'll see you next week, inshallah. And it's our pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.